learn and do well and improve and follow our place-based values. I, I, I'm kind of an optimist and I think that we'll be able to transform capitalism in general outwards with these things like, like we heard in Jess's amazing talk. Um, that business business structures and capitalism needs to be completely reformed. We need to look to our ancestral economies and tangible wealth. We need to operate with values for kinship and reciprocity, and especially recognizing everybody's gifts that they bring. We spoke, uh, all of us here in the Pacific Northwest from Northern California to Alaska, a trade language called the Chinook. And uh, so it is an important, it's important to recognize that we carried on uh, market-based economies from traditional times. We had a extensive trade networks uh, throughout the Americas. Here in the Pacific Northwest, we call those the Grease Trails. Uh, Grease Trails for Ooligan Greece. Uh, from the coastal areas over to the prairies. And so we're familiar with, with the economies. As a matter of fact, we wouldn't have lived, uh, been able to live on these lands for many years. Uh, we've got to be able to have all of the institutions that the rest of the Canadian and American citizens take for granted that facilitate a true uh, market-based approach uh, in dealing with trade. And we're no strangers to that. You know, even now when people are talking about a green economy, that's what our economies were based on. They were always sustainable economy. It isn't just about working between First Nations here in Canada and tribes in the United States. It's reaching out a hand of goodwill and cooperation to all of our brothers and sisters throughout the Americas, because we've all been infected uh, by the co colonization uh, throughout the Americas. And just think about the gifts we've given to the world. Uh, think about the Vatican, you know, the P with the Pieta, uh, the, the, the uh, you know, just, just that alone is incredible. The Sistine Chapel, all of those were built with the wealth that was generated here in the Americas. So when I think about the way forward, it's about claiming our rightful jurisdiction so that we don't have to be beggars in our own lands, that we don't have to be asking somebody else for a program, that we can do it through fiscal powers, and that we harness the imagination, our collective imagination of our youth. Because the, one of the most fundamental things that we can offer to the world is innovation. And you as young people, are our future innovators. Think, imagine, think about these last four words, last four things, stories of hope, stories of dreams, stories of renewal, and stories of tomorrow. always managed the lands and resources for future generations. It was not about me now more. It was always about the future generation, the younger generations. How do you do that in a, in a, in a sustainable way? There were always protocols in, and we've got four protocols that we've uh, kind of codified in, in, in all of our community planning over the years. Um, it was, it, we, we call them the ASK protocol. I mean, the speak, one of the speakers before me mentioned something, one, one of them in, in the presentation, but basically doing it right, um, taking only what you need, no more. Um, if you take it in, take it out, clean it up after you're done doing whatever it is that you're doing within our territory. Um, these are the principles, we call them the sustainability principles too. I mean, if you go in academia, that's what they talk about, but this is how indigenous people, this is how Tlaxcala um, has always lived and survived and sustained themselves.